All right, guys, so in this really quick tutorial, we're going to create a list, okay? And in that list, we'll be able to uh, select different items and let them expand like so. We'll also be able to delete things and move them around. So I can move the order around like so. All right, I can move this one around, all right? And that's going to be the whole goal of what we're doing right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to start by creating a new project. I'm going to make sure that when I create a new project, it's the watch OS. Okay, I'm going to call this code tutorial underscore watch OS list basics. I'm just going to create the same folder. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get rid of the navigator on the left, sidebar on the right. Okay, and then I'm going to create a list right off the get-go, right, right off the bat. Okay, and let's look at what we had over here. So we're going to have a list inside of here. We're going to have a for each, and inside of that, it's going to be a V stack. So let's go ahead and put that. So for each is the next part. Okay, and we'll say for each is zero, dot, dot, and less than five. And we'll just do this for now, underscore in. And we'll say text. We're just gonna make it say a. Hey, hey, hey. So save it. We'll run it, and it's starting to run. And while that's doing that, let's go ahead and get ready. So pretty easy so far. We already have our list. Okay. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a state variable here, and I'm gonna call this one select uh, selected person. It's gonna be equal to. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna comment that out for one second. Let's go up here and build a new struct. We're gonna create a new struct, okay? And we're gonna call this person. And it's gonna to adhere to the identifiable protocol. So what that means, that'll be able to, I need to add a variable called ID. It's gonna be equal to UUID, which we've talked about before. It's just universal unique identifier, okay? And that's how we can kind of differentiate between different, maybe visual, visually identical views, but they're not necessarily carbon copies of each other on the inside. So that's what identifiable helps us with. So var ID, I'm going to give them a name. So var name, and it's going to be of type string. And var uh, age, it's going to be of type int. And I'm sorry if this is something you already are aware of, but I was always confused when I started about why I used to put equal versus colon, okay? So if I put a colon here, that means it's going to be of this type, but I have not yet given it a value. If I say it's equal to something, it obviously has to adhere to that type, and I'm giving it a value off the bat. So I can say this is going to be equal to blah, 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 right? But if I don't give it a value, that means when I initiate it, I have to give it a value, which guarantee I do this to, I mean, I could give it a default value of like, you know, nothing or potato. But when I do it like this, I guarantee that I have to give it a value when I initiate it or initialize it. So now I created that struct and select a person is going to be equal to, there's going to be of type person, okay, optional person. Then we're gonna have a new variable here called people, and it's gonna to adhere to, it's gonna be a array of persons. Okay, I'm just gonna create four people here, so person. And so speaking back to that idea, I don't, since, since I can already give it, it's, since it can already create its own UUID, I don't have to initialize, I could give it its own one by declaring something, or I can just let it create its own the way it would generate it here. I'm gonna let it create its own, and only give it a name and an age. So, name, and then I'll the first one, okay. I'm not actually 50, but I didn't know how much I should share on this internet, so. That's why it says 50. And then let's do last cup. Okay, actually these need to be integers. That was a silly uh, thing to not notice. So these need to not be strings forms of the numbers. They need to be integer forms because that's what I said they would be 50. Okay, perfect. And now 
instead of making five of these, I'm just going to say for each and then run through person. And how do how can I keep track of which one is which person is which when I start maybe changing the order of things? I'll say you can keep track of them using their ID. Okay. Then I'll access each one of those people inside of this closure using this person. So now this person will refer to each one of these and that when I go through the list. Okay. Ah, uh, sorry, that should say people. Now I can just create a text. I'm actually gonna create a button. Okay, so there's my button. I'm going to embed that button in a VStack. And I'm embedding it because I'm underneath it, I'm going to put a, I'm going to put a conditional that says if selected person is equal to this person, show me a second text. Okay, that text is going to have, uh, it's, we're going to use string interpolarization here. So this person dot age okay and this one by default we will always show this person dot name and whenever I click on this button I'm gonna run through a conditional I'm gonna say if this person is equal to nil or this person does not equal, sorry, not this person, selected person. So selected person refers to the one that I will have selected, which in this, so in the example I was giving earlier was, I think, this one, nah, sorry about that. Maybe it's this one. There we go. The one that I've currently selected, that's the selected person. And this person is just the when I'm running through the loop, okay? So I'm just going to say, I'm going to call this loop person, so that we don't get confused. So loop person, loop person, and loop person, loop person, loop person. Okay. So what this conditional is saying is, if the selected person is equal to nobody, meaning we haven't selected a person, or the loop person, or, or the selected person, is not equal to this, but not equal to the loop person. Person. Okay. Then we are going to say selected person, or you know, even easier. Why am I? There's no need to create this or kind of a loop. Instead, what I should just say, this is the cleaner way to do it. Just to say, if the selected person is equal to the loop person just make the selected person equal to nil again. Now that's the clean way to write that, okay? And in all other scenarios, which are the diff two different scenarios I listed above, in all other scenarios, just make the self, self dot selected person equal to loop person. And so by doing that, I, I, I was able to create the same thing, you know, this else is encompassing the two uh, possibilities that we were trying to write out above. So I can save that and I can run, um, let's see what it's saying. Selected person. So it's saying we can't equate them. So that's not a problem. So what we can do is we can say selected person is going to be equal to, we'll make it a string just for the sake of simplicity. Actually, we'll make it, yeah, a string. Okay. And let's say, even better, we will make it, so we'll say string, and then we'll say that when we start setting values, we'll say it's going to be equal to loop person dot, dot id dot uuid string. That's one of the attributes we have in id, or in, in uuid. One of the things we can do is take a uuid and convert it to a string. So that should take care of that, and let's just make sure we didn't miss anything here. So anywhere we were doing comparisons of selected person and loop person, we need to make sure that we have dot uuid string. Okay, and the last one should be right here. So let's just reiterate what we just did there, okay? So it was telling us we cannot technically compare person because it only adheres to identifiable, but it does not adhere to equatable. So one thing that does adhere to equatable, meaning I can compare them, is a string. 
so I said instead of you know instead of going through the trouble and for the sake of this tutorial uh, in, cr in creating things that are equatable I'll just compare their strings so by default selected person is nil because it's optional and it doesn't have a value so we're saying if the selected person happens to actually have a value and it's equal to this person's string and that means I'm clicking on it again if I'm in this portion of the loop that means deselect them and set it back equal to nil otherwise self.selected person so in all other situations so that means literally any situation where I want to select the current one and just say self.selected person is now going to be equal to that UUID string and that is just the action of that button now let's close that so we don't start getting confused now what does that button look like it's that loop person's name and underneath it if we so happen to select that person uh, we are on the person that is selected we'll also show that person's age so let's save it and run it and let's look at what we got there we go we're getting there so now I'm just gonna put a couple things here so age okay then I'm going to make this alignment dot leading and then I'm gonna take the stack I'm gonna take the everything yeah in the stack and I'm gonna say list we should be able to say list palette color hmm that's okay we can keep moving on from that um the next thing I wanted to if I if I run this now run it and save and run it Everything should should uh, move over to the left now. Let's see if we can get this autocomplete to work here. Show editor only. Ah, uh, yes, we needed it all the way. I think right here. So I, I have a piece from another from the finished product that we can just go ahead and look at, so we don't have to waste too much time. But I'm going to use this right here, and we'll talk about what it is. So list row palette color. So list row palette color. You'll see what it's going to change in a second. I'm just going to say it's red. Okay. I don't know why the autocomplete wasn't working. Um, but what it's letting us do is it's letting us change the background color of the actual item. So that is definitely different than just changing the background color of that of the same hierarchy. So I can just come and say background. Okay. And I can give it a color of blue, but that is not the same thing as the list row platter, platter color. Okay, and list row platter, platter color is something that we see specifically in the watch, right? So that's the difference between background and list row platter color. Okay, so get rid of that. The only thing I'm going to do here now is I'm going to change this to say it's going to be a ternary operator. We'll say if selected person equal to and then we'll do loop person id uuid string so if that's true then i want the background to be color dot init white 0. Point, um, we'll do 0. 0.3 and if it's false sorry get rid of that so that's the true half and now the false half is 0. 0.1 save it we've just given an animation Okay, if we look at the animation we use in this one, we use a linear one. I think I'm just going to go ahead and use an ease in out duration of 0 0.2. Re realign everything, reindent everything, save it and run it. Let's see what we get. Uh, we just need to put self dot. That should take care of that. So now when I click on one, we can see everything inside of it and it expands with us the same way we'd wanted it to. Okay, maybe the last thing I would do is probably just give some padding to this V-Stack. And I'm getting pretty nitpicky here, but that's the last thing so we can look at the nice finished product. There we go. Okay, so there's the nice finished product where Oh, actually, we have a couple more pieces to do. I forgot we were going to delete and move. So that's actually pretty easy, too. So looking at this, if we look at the finished product that we wanted to move and delete from, so I'm going to grab the on move and the on delete. And 
I'm gonna fold up all the code that we had. I'm gonna realign everything. I'm gonna fold up all the code that I can fold up, I guess. And if you look at the outside of this for each, okay, look at the outside of curly bracket. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna first create actually two functions, okay, delete and move. And if you've watched my draggable uh, list tutorial on regular lists on the iPhone, it actually is, uh, it's pretty much the exact same function, minus a few conditionals. So what is this function saying? First thing we need to do is if we need, if we want to modify any type of variable like this, um, this array, we need to make it a state variable. Okay. Now that it's a state variable, I created this first function. Okay, and it's called delete. And we're saying delete at the offsets of whatever we, you know, wherever we place this delete function, which you'll see in a moment. We're going to remove that person. We're going to remove the object that is at the offsets equal to offsets in the array of people. And move, it's the same principle. We're going to move it from one offset to a different offset, okay? And it's going to just go ahead and execute it just like that. So what I can do here is I can just go to the for each and I can say dot. Let's see, we have the on move and the on delete, okay? And so that is right on the outside of the for each. So we'll go here and say, yeah, so dot on move, okay? Perform move. So it knows on move, so when you try moving it, perform the move function. And you can only imagine that the delete looks exactly the same. Save it, run it. Once it builds, there we go. So now we have different things we can open up and look at. Then I can delete some, so delete, delete. We can select some others, all right, and we can even move around. All right, and that's it. So actually, I have no idea why that did that. But if you have any questions, um, please feel free to shoot me a message below, and I would be happy to answer them. And if you have any other ideas of things we could do with the watch, please let me know. I'll see you in the next video.